Kevin, we are officially in the future because the International Space Station now has an espresso machine. And it's not just espresso, because you can also get tea <laughs> as well. And broth. And broth, which is good if you want, like, soup in space. This is Space News. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Space News. I'm Marcus. And I'm Kevin. Exactly. And we're here today to talk to you about new stuff that's gotten up to the International Space Station. So the latest Dragon resupply mission, CRS-6, docked with the International Space Station on April 17th. So that brought the ISS espresso machine uh, to the station, as well as many different scientific supplies. Mostly medical testing equipment that actually test the astronauts that are up there for a full year, namely uh, Kelly and Kornienko. Kornienko. Yeah, those two will be being tested constantly for how well their bodies are going to be reacting to zero... Low gravity for the next 365 days. But the ship that brought that up there, the Dragon, was launched on uh, April 14th off the Falcon 9 rocket from SpaceX. Right. So we had covered in previous episodes how SpaceX wants to recover their first stages. Right. And so the first stage of CRS-6 attempted a barge landing again on the SpaceX barge named Just Read the Instructions out in the Atlantic. And the video shows it getting so it's there it's all it's there it's there it's there and oh it just falls off to the yeah, side so it had a bit too much lateral velocity so moving to the side and right now they're checking their like telemetry and their designs for one of the throttle valves like if it's delayed for a second mm-hmm. it isn't thrusting in the right direction for yeah. long enough Makes and so sense. it didn't slow down like going left or right I mean, it looked great. It looked like we were on track for a 10-point landing. But, of course, I mean, even Elon Musk was a little... He knew that something wasn't going to grow, right? Because on yeah. Twitter, he joked around saying, If this works, I'm treating myself to a volcano lair. It's time. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, he was joking. He also changed his profile picture to him holding a white cat like Blofeld from uh, the James Bond movies. But it's just funny that he, even he had an idea that eh, it's probably not going to work, but there's a chance that it but could. But he believes that there's an 80% chance by the end of the year we see a successful barge landing. Right. And if this this attempt is any evidence of that, I think within two, I think we're definitely going to get this yeah. right. But you've heard enough about SpaceX. I know we go on about it all the time. What about a different space company, namely something from the ULA? Yeah, so the United Launch Alliance is the fusion of Lockheed and Boeing. Uh, They make rockets and provide about 70% of the launches for the United States. So they have a a very firm control of the traditional launch system. Right. But the SpaceX effect is being felt everywhere. And so the ULA needs to make rocket designs that are competitive with SpaceX's low, low prices. Not only just low, low prices, but reusability. I mean, that's part of the low, low prices. But the new design of a new rocket called the Vulcan. Yep. Not to be confused with, you know, Spock's planet. Uh, will actually allow them to recover the engine, just one of the engines of the, the new rocket. Right. So the, the engine segment would disconnect from the rest of the stage. It would have its own re-entry, like, shield that right. it could deploy. And then parachutes. And then a helicopter scoops it up. Now, helicopters scooping up things using parachutes... It has happened before. Right. Um, reconnaissance satellites used to do it before we had like digital storage. Right. So it is an old style and old technology that's been done before. So it makes sense. I mean, if you're going to, they're just starting out with this sort of idea. So why not start with some older tech and then try and build up from there? And the idea of just recovering an engine is very, I think it's, it's a very interesting idea for being a very specific piece of the puzzle. That's the expensive part anyway. Right, exactly. So they're just trying to keep the cost down by recovering the one expensive piece <laughs> that's on this thing and just reusing that as many times as possible, which is a good idea. Lastly, last week we talked to you about something that probably barely interested you, but it's something that had to do with everything <laughs> that you have in your home, namely a microwave. This week, microwaves are coming back in a different way. So... Those Roombas, you probably have one. I wish I had one. Made by iRobot, the robotic vacuum cleaner company. They are trying to expand their market out to making robotic lawnmowers. But in order to do that, they need to build electric fences outside on your lawn so the robot just doesn't go creening into the street and chop people's feet off because 
metal blade yeah. spinning really fast on a robot not a good thing and in order to communicate with the driverless lawnmower they need certain communication channels they right. say right um and those communication channels are on the exact same radio frequencies as what astronomers use to detect methanol yes in which space is, which is important for looking at uh, young stars and things like that so for uh, for us to do important research into determining you know our origins in the universe we need those wave bands. Now, iRobot has tried to go to the FCC to get this channel of frequencies, uh, six, you know, about 6,000 megahertz or so, cleared so they could use it for residential purposes. But astronomers have been fighting against this, namely the NRAO. Um, they have requested that iRobot stop or prevent this uh, use of these uh, technologies around their telescopes, the radio telescopes, namely in a 55-mile radius. And iRobot says, uh, astronomy, do you really need that much? Right, and they're trying to cut it back. They're like, ah, oh, you only need 12, which, if you think about it, um, I think the astronomers know how much space they need. Yeah, the telescopes are really sensitive, so I believe the 55. If a microwave could set it off, <laughs> I'm pretty sure a high-powered robot that, you know, has these very strong frequencies will probably set it off, too. But this has been a long, ongoing thing that's really just reached its peak recently. And hoping that the astronomers, they don't want to stop iRobot. They just want to make sure, make it clear that they don't build within, you know, their realm of the Earth. So hopefully that'll get solved soon by the FCC. Uh, otherwise, we want to thank you for watching. Also, you can buy swag t-shirts because it's cold in space and you should cover your chest. So we have t-shirts for you over at outofspacetv.spreadshirt.com. Uh, you can also support the show by liking, commenting, and subscribing below subscribing below doing all those good things so thank you for watching thanks and we'll see you out there thanks for watching today's video you can like and subscribe down below as well as comment on all the different subjects that we talked about today you can find other content elsewhere on the internet so look for those links you can also watch a random video of our channel right here thanks for watching